Hello YouTube and welcome to another moto vlog coming at you pretty recently after I recorded this even. This was made on the, uh, you know what, I have to look, I want to say this was the 11th. Yep, Thursday the 11th and um, yeah, now it is the 14th, so it's only been three days since I recorded this, give or take. Um, so yeah, I mean, I went out a little bit on Thursday for a little late kind of lunch and did a one hour ride. Um, 57 minutes, so let's add 10 minutes onto that. So hour 10, hour 15 minute ride. And um, this is gonna be pretty boring, even as far as my videos go, in my opinion, because um, I'm showing like the whole thing where I was moving. This is just like my area, kind of like a little tour of sort of the, my area I guess I've been I'm th this first place I'm going I've never actually been up here anytime recently um, I used to know someone who lived up here some people who lived up here but I can't say I've gone in 20 years <laughs> yeah well maybe, maybe a little less than that but maybe like 18 years I've been there in like 18 to 20 years since I was like you know in high school um, before I could drive, I never drove up here myself. So that's funny. I've lived in this area a long time. Well, not a long time. I lived in this area a couple years now, right? And I've never. So you'll see. You'll see. We're getting pretty close to the churn. I've just never made a churn and gone up this way. Like, why would I? <laughs> and then the second part of the video um, will be stuff that I've done before. Although I do not believe I showed any of this on video because. I mean, to me, it's not exactly like the world's greatest riding. Um, I did find a new road. I saw a truck. We'll get to that point. I believe I saw a truck make a turn, and I was like, you know, that looks like a way I could go. So I made the turn, you know, and followed him. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Followed him through the turn to see what was going to happen. Because I have the GPS on the bike. It's, like, impossible to get, like, truly lost, you know, around here at least. I don't know about other parts of the country, but around, you know, Northern Virginia, it's not going to happen. You can't go very far without running into a main road. But yeah, this is like the, the situation now that we're looking at, I mean, ugh, it's just suburbia, right? We got the suburban houses and light after light of this boulevard traffic. Um, this isn't really my favorite type of riding, um, I gotta admit, I feel very on edge when riding in this kind of stuff, like, there's a lot going on, like, look at the visibility trap of that truck, like, you can't see if someone was gonna make a left across you, it makes me nervous, you know? We got three lanes of traffic going on, it looks like I'm trying to change lanes here. Honor. I mean, I'm, I'm like kind of looking over my shoulder, right? Yeah. Ah, see, there's a car. So I gotta like, see, he's gonna go forward, and I'm gonna get over now. And, th and that's the question I always ask myself: like, how aggressive should I be? Like, a lot of riders would say, what I did there was less safe. By instead of just accelerating past that, 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 uh, whatever crossover thing. Um, I don't know. I think we can all admit that that is an ugly car. <laughs> that black one that um, was near me when I tried to change lanes. I don't blame him for anything. He's just he, he can't make his car disappear. So, so yeah, here here is where we're going. We're gonna be making this left um, on Algonquian Parkway. So, for those that know, obviously you turn right. That's 286 Fairfax County Parkway, and that goes for like I don't know 20 miles, maybe maybe less um, through Fair do a decent bit of Fairfax County until it gets to. Um, uh, outside of Springfield, uh, the city of Springfield, and then it uh, changes to the Springfield, Franconia Springfield Parkway. So, but it's all one road, like the Algonquin Parkway into the Fairfax County Parkway into the Franconia Springfield Parkway is all one road. And then there's a second Fairfax County Parkway that's an exit from the Franconia Springfield Parkway. Like you continue on the Fairfax County Parkway that way. And I guess that's the true Fairfax County Parkway, but that's like kind of more new. That didn't, that, that, that hasn't always been there. Like, this used to just be one road. Well, in fact, I mean, if we want to go really far back, this whole thing is, is a pretty new development. The whole 
I think the Algonquin Parkway, Franconia, Springfield Parkway, Fairbanks County Parkway thing is all new. They, these were older one lane roads kind of before. Um, I want to see, I'm, I'm talking like 1990. These were all like one lane, um, you know, back, kind of like back roads, so to speak, right? And, the, and all these houses, none of these were here. This was all just country stuff. And there were houses back here, but none of these like developments were really built. You'd have to, you'd find, you know, the more estate type stuff. Um, and I think again, outside some of the towns, like maybe, I don't know, Leesburg, Sterling, that kind of thing. There wasn't a whole lot. I think the, I mean, the airport was here obviously, but that was the biggest draw in this area. There were no data centers. You know, there was some manufacturing and there was stuff going on, but you know, you know, we didn't have data centers, so it was a different world. Um, but yeah, over the 90s, they started building this up and they, you know, expanded the one lane roads and they added connector roads and they basically turned this kind of patchwork series of one lane roads and it would take forever. They get from like Fairfax County or they get from like Fairfax Station to like where I am here in the video. I mean, it would take, I'd probably say an hour to an hour and a half because there was no good direct route you would have to take back roads a lot of the way or you'd have to go really far out of your way and get on the interstate and then come up like i don't know georgetown pike maybe again I, that was a long time ago but you would take back roads to come up here and when they finally opened the connector i want to say it was it was even after like the year 2000 they finally connected everything to where this is all one road uh just with different names the the I, I rode my bicycle on the Fairmont County Parkway before it was like uh, open to cars and stuff. It was all coned off and stuff, but the road was paved and they, I don't know, my mom took me and we rode our bicycles. That's the hill right after the Burke Center Parkway intersection where there's those big hills and there's like a, uh, there's a cycling path there, I believe. So, you know, you go over Fairfax Station Road and it, that, that, that's where I rode my bicycle. Just like in the middle of the road, like you'd never do that now. I mean, you could, but you'd be insane. <sighs> Legally dead, right? So what I have cut out, I think uh, we've seen before is the, the traffic lights. I have gone through the footage instead of just dumping this all in and making an hour long footage of just complete unedited footage. What I have edited out is when I'm stopped at lights. And like I said, that must, that might be like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, I stop at some of these lights actually do take quite a while, but most of the time I'm cutting out is like, you know, 30 seconds or less, which is, but in my opinion, that, uh, that's enough to just really take a boring t style video, which is my videos, then an even more boring style, which is just like suburbia in my opinion. And then and just sitting there for 30 seconds at a light every five minutes, you're going to get really annoyed really quick at me, I think. That's for sure. <laughs> I'm not really texting this time, but still can be at a loss for words. So I'm passing on the right. Um, pretty quick too, but I'm just passing one car at a time at least. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to surface streets, passing on the right is a different story because left, use the left lane or use the right lane except when the pass just, I don't think applies on these roads. It's just not going to, I mean, it'll work. It would work if everyone agreed to it, but that's just not the agreement. That's not the social agreement. Um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Traffic should be flowing at a fairly predictable rate. If you're like kind of the odd man out on a road like this, you're setting yourself up for a lot more risk. Um, if you're going like, you know what I mean? If you're going much faster in the flow of traffic, you have all these intersections, right? And a lot of times when people are on roads like this, they're near, they're near things, right? They're near their homes. They're near businesses. So they're, they're, they're driving in areas like this particularly they're close to home or close to their destination and that's a route they've done a million times before right and they've been they've become used to it and you kind of you kind of start going into the autopilot from time to time and so you have to expect that some of these guys are going to be you know on autopilot wow i made kind of a last second judgment call to make a turn there jesus i was really close sort of i mean the camera makes it look I don't know, different than it is. I wouldn't say it makes it look closer or further, just a little different. 
But yeah, I mean, if you're going really fast, someone might look at you to make one of these laps, and you're a little close, and you're going really fast, and, you, and if they turn in front of you, it's not gonna work, right? But they misjudge your speed because they're expecting you to go 45 to 55 miles an hour, but you're going like you're going like 80. You know, it's like, yeah, you're setting yourself up. But even a less extreme example, you're going 55, you're going 60. You know, you're, you, that's a lot more stopping distance. So you're gonna hit that car a lot harder. And it sucks. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir, but like, even to myself here, like, but I mean, there's when, when your time comes up and like someone makes a left turn in front of you, like, there's not a lot you're gonna be able to do about it. I mean, you better hope that like one, your fingers are on the brake and you're not accelerating, and two, you're not going that fast. So here, okay, here I'm checking up because yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, it's obviously not like a huge deal. I'm just. I think I'm just, again, I'm just kind of keeping up with traffic here. Like, I'm going a little slower, right? I'm leaving, like, a good cap. And I'm doing this here particularly because it's, like, a rubbernecking situation here with all the emergency stuff. And, yeah, that overturned car, it's, just, it's kind of hard to see, but, yeah. If you look there on the left, there was, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it there for a second. There's, like, an overturned car. I guess it was kind of, like, not on its roof, but on, like, its side. And then up here, there's a smashed car. Um, I remember the front, like maybe passenger quarter panel, or the driver quarter panel, whatever. One of the one of the one of the front quarter panels was kind of bashed up. So it looks like maybe I don't know. That guy was starting to turn out, maybe right the mini, and then the the car that was overturned was coming. And it was, it was just what I was saying, right? There was like a speed or distance misjudgment. Like the Mini thought that the overturned car was going to probably be, you know, going a lot slower than they were, but it all, the overturned car had to try to swerve and they probably swerved, but still hit the car and lost control of their car and ended up, you know, going off the road and rolling the car. Oof, just, you know, I mean, you see it. Like if you swerve left initially, what you end up doing is turning to the right, correcting your swerve too quickly, and um, too too quickly, too violently. You turn the wheel too much, and um, you set your car into a really bad position. I mean, and when you're in a collision, especially like, I mean, who can blame somebody for not being, you know, whatever, you know, Mark, Marco Andretti or who, whoever you want to name, and like behind the wheel. And of course, all those guys have crashed plenty of times. There's been no great racing driver that hasn't crashed. You know, and maybe their crashes weren't as easy, you know, but it's a level of skill. Like, there's always a disparity in skill. Like, you're going too fast for your skill. A situation that happens beyond your skill to control. Or, there, you know, there's situations, of course, that happen beyond anyone's skill to control. And when you're talking about skill, and um, this is something I go on and on about. When you're talking about skill, like, it's it's the skill you're having in the moment. So, like, if you're zoned out and tired or whatever, your skill level is very low, no matter how good you are, right? Because you can't... The, 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 the time you're going to have to react to a situation, that time is too fast for you to be able to flip the switch to go from slow and not present in the moment to acting correctly you know you you have less than half a second and that's being generous to start properly acting on the controls of your motorcycle when something goes goes wrong right and if you're not in the moment like that five, that half a second can turn into a second plus two seconds even right depending on what's going on <clears throat> and that just happens that happens to everybody <clears throat> oh jeez. I need some water here. I should have been. I'm too used to uh, the drinking when I'm doing this and having something to drink. And I'm sitting here with nothing to drink. What am I doing? Okay, gotta remember for next time. I need like a cup of water or like something, some kind of some some to hold some water. So yeah, it's kind of funny. Like I, I, I'm not gonna say like again I quit drinking, but it's been a few days since I started making these videos. I certainly haven't drank, and um, it's been a while before that too. Um, since I like, I think a couple days before I made the videos, I went out and had like two drinks to celebrate something. But I literally, I actually, I literally had two drinks. I had a pint of beer, which wasn't even like high gravity stuff. And then I had one drink of whiskey and that was it. Somehow I managed to stay good with that. And I'm not saying it's something I want to repeat a lot, but yeah, I mean, 
it's been, I guess about four days, a little less than four days since that. So it's not too bad, but before that, I mean, it had been like a week and a half. And then I was drinking with my family, which wasn't cool for a couple of days. I mean, it is what it is, but <laughs> yeah. And then before that, it was like two, three weeks before I drank. So, I mean, I obviously just getting started on this. It's like, you know, a very long-term process. So I don't know why I'm talking about it. It's a long video. I mean, and from here on out, I mean, we headed out right from that ride I had done. So now we're gonna be going to places I have gone. Um, and this is gonna be more open riding, like less boulevardy and more kind of faster roads, which I'm, faster roads and maybe some twistier stuff, kind of out more away from residential areas. In my opinion, yeah, residential areas, I mean, in this area, uh, well, in this, you know, region, residential areas can be great or bad, right? You have some amazing roads that are essentially neighborhood roads, right? But they're also kind of like thoroughfares in, in another sense, like there's houses along it and there's cross traffic, but it's a windy road through the hills that connects to other kind of, you know, secondary roads as well. And you can use it to get places. So you're left in this situation where you, you have so much going on with the houses and the cross traffic and the, you know, commuters, of course, right, that... Um, it can be very difficult, but when you can find the right time to ride on the road, it can be really nice because there's, there's slower roads, but they're also still fairly well paved and they're nice and twisty too. Even you got a nice mix of, you know, slower and maybe even some faster corners. Although again, as I say over and over, you really don't want to go that fast. Um, even if you have all the opportunity in the world, like a motorcycle like this, and then mentioning even less something more powerful and lighter, which there are tons of examples of motorcycles that are both. Um, 100 miles an hour, like in Clifton, is not more than a twist of the wrist and waiting, you know, two or three seconds from when you're going 50 miles an hour, right? 50 to 100. I, I, I mean, it's probably what? It's got to be three seconds. 50 to 100. Because the, the bike is pulling at that point so hard that what's what's limiting you and this is like a stock like say like a like a leader bike like a like an s1000 double r since i'm a bmw guy or like but i mean really anything you know like a zx 10 r like a modern zx 10 r or a ducati or you know jixer 1000 as, as as people like to hate on that bike there it is not slow especially when you take that ridiculous exhaust off of it um, that bike is absurdly powerful. So I'm exiting here. I was actually planning on going um, further down this way, but as you can see, there was construction and I was like, last minute decision, I'll just exit. Um, now what I could have done is just stayed on this, you know, little slip road here or whatever it's called, you know, the exit and, and continue. Cause if you just stay in the left lane, it just, you just end up, you know, getting back on the road down there. but. By the time I really saw that, I was like, yeah, it's kind of a dick move, and let's just, let's just flow with the wind, go with the punches, you know? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if that's a Rickyism. it was getting pretty close. Like, dyslexic. <laughs> kind of, um, saying there. I hate this intersection, though, where these two, so you get this here, and like all the, I know this guy's turning right. Because that's what I want to do a lot of times when I come down this way. I want to cross, but I have to cross two lanes. And you have what? 250 yards or less even to do it? It's crazy. I really do not like that. And to be honest, if I were a newer driver and especially a newer rider, I would avoid this area on your motorcycle, okay? This is Waxpool Road, right as you're crossing over Sterling Boulevard. Or right as you're crossing over from W Church, West Church Road, and it turns into Wax Pool, that first intersection is super dangerous. If you're gonna ride there any with any regularity, I would first off stay in the left lane. Don't go up to that first intersection in the right lane. Stay to the left because in that right lane you have so many people trying to change lanes, you can easily get sideswiped or rear-ended or something really bad. At least in the left lane, you're the most protected. But yeah, if you can avoid that area, like by going around or something, it's probably better. There's a, <clears throat> there's a lot less traffic. 
But you can't always avoid it, you know? I mean, there's not, like, a lot of crossovers on 28. The next, you know, e the next one each in each direction is, like, miles away. Like, a couple miles each way, so... It adds a lot of time and a lot of lights if you want to go around, so... I can see why you want to go that way, but yeah, especially as a new rider, being in that right lane, um, the one, the right-hand lane that's going straight isn't the best. <clears throat> but sometimes you have to do it. I mean, if you're coming off that exit like I was there, you really have no choice. It's just not something, to be honest, like, I would, I would not want to do that every day on a motorcycle. Or, I mean, just not in a car, but especially not on a bike either. <laughs> but but so you just have no choice. I'm going on and on about this stupid wax pool thing. Uh, so here's like the more corporate areas. Like again, I don't know the history of this, but this obviously used to just be like woods. There was nothing here. <coughs> they just cleared out the land and flattened it out and built all these huge buildings. I mean, that's what we do, right? Um, so, and then I think here I end up, don't I have to turn right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have to turn right. I wasn't sure I'd never gone this way because I, I never taken that exit before on the on the uh, wax or the yeah the wax pool, and I and I wanted to take that first light like but you know there was that median preventing me from getting over, and obviously the GS could go over that median like it wasn't there like yes I know that, and I could do it too I could handle making the GS go over that median like it wasn't there but just I think from a legal and. I, I know I, I don't want to use the word ethics because it's not ethics, but I would say more from like a legal and just kind of like conformist perspective. I guess in a sense that is a, a, a certain form of ethics, right? Like practice what you preach. Like I don't want to see people hopping that median. Like when I'm driving, I wouldn't want a motorcyclist to do that or a car or a guy in a Jeep or even like, you know, a, a whatever, you know, a car with decent ride, how you can do it. But I just don't want to see people doing it, okay? It's not cool. Just, like, go around. It's, like, you make the next left. Suck it up, buttercup, right? Like, it was no big deal. <laughs> Get your Raytheon ass out of here or whatever. Because like, if you make that first left, it's all Raytheon there. That's where they are, I guess, in that area. So, oh, that, there's a really good commuter lot there. I always forget about that. I need to remember that commuter lot. Um, that's probably the place to go practice because um, on the weekends, people really aren't commuting, and especially like on Sundays, there's going to be like a few cars there, maybe, right? And it's a pretty big lot, and it's, it's, it's well paved. It's pretty new as well, which is nice. And the biggest reason is, I'll say that in a second. We had to have a little GS noise, even though it's nothing to write home about. But yeah, the biggest reason is um, we've seen other, we've seen another commuter lot um, down by down off of 95. Um, we've been the one there in Fairfax County, and um, it's never been a problem. Um, I'm not gonna. If you know the spot, you know the spot. Like y if you know what I'm talking about, you can probably find it. But I'm not gonna like call it exactly where to find it. Sorry. Um, you can ask me if you need to, but. I don't want to tell people I don't know like places and have them blow up the spot because it's like if you're not stunting or doing anything where it's like you're going to get hurt if something goes wrong like even like a little bit right like if something goes wrong and you're learning the ride you could totally get hurt and it, it definitely happens like these are heavy ass machines right if you fall wrong like in an awkward way like <laughs> yeah I mean that that's the worst yeah if you fall in an awkward way like there's a fine line and, and I've learned um, one way, right? So that there's kind of two mistakes you can make, right? One is trying to, like, once you start falling, one mistake you can make is trying to stop yourself. Like, holding out your arm to try to brace yourself against the ground or using your leg or something. Like, you don't want to land necessarily like you're walking or running, right? You want to land when you're falling, like on your side or your back. Like I would say preferably on your side is probably the best way to land. Like you're making the best of the worst situation if you land like on your side, in my opinion. Um, if you land flat on your face or flat on your back, that really hurts. But to be honest, it's, I mean, that's bad too. But um, when you're landing like maybe like on your feet, if you're gonna, if your feet are the first thing they're gonna hit, make sure it's not like the entire, your entire foot. 
Like, so if you can somehow land, like, on, like, you know, with your foot kind of, like, canted, so it doesn't try to, you don't plant your foot, and you kind of just roll and, like, rotate into the ground. Because if you don't and your leg is locked, like, your ankle is stiff or your leg is, or your knee is stiff or your hips, anything is stiff, and you kind of, your body's able to torque against itself, like, and, like, your foot plants and you start to rotate, but your foot planted, that's, like, super bad. That's, like, one of the worst case scenarios for falling, um, because you're gonna end up breaking something, like, your leg, or you're, you're gonna twist, you're gonna, like, tear your ACL if it's not as bad, maybe, or, like, sprain your ankle, or all three. You could totally do all three, and this is, like, on any vehicle, like, this can happen to anybody anytime they get on, like, a a bicycle, a motorcycle, they go skiing, skateboarding, you know, rollerblading. I, I don't know. Like, he, I mean, to a lesser extent, I mean, you have running and walking, but definitely what, right? Like mountain, uh, mountaineering or whatever, hiking, depending on how, how tr- rigorous it is and how much you're paying attention and everything. You know how much you weigh. Obviously, like, I'm I'm pretty fat. I'm losing weight, but like I'm still pretty fat. So like really fat. Like so, going hiking for me would be a very like delicate process. Like I wouldn't want to do a lot of miles or do anything too treacherous because I need I, I'm gonna need to be really paying attention to where I take every step. Because a misstep, like someone who is you know a normal fit body weight, um, if they take a misstep. They can totally hurt themselves, but like my chance, I have so much more mass, you know? I could hurt myself a lot more easily. It's not like my bones are heavier. You know, my skeleton's supporting a lot more weight, so things could go really wrong really, really fast for me. And I think that is partially why I did dislocate my shoulder, but that mostly was going the other way. So like I said, like you don't want to stop yourself from falling, right? You kind of just want to roll with the punches and just... You, you basically want to try to relax as you, cause it's gonna hurt like falling hurts every time no matter who you are it hurts so you have to just kind of like know it's coming and just like it's too late just let go and just like try to calm down like even for like an instant and like I said this is like impossible to do these are things that I can suggest but you, you can't you, this is nothing that like when this is when, when you're falling you, like your adrenaline's most likely your adrenaline's high and like something has gone wrong. Usually a series of some things have gone wrong. Maybe you haven't noticed it yet, but like mistakes have been piling up potentially. And like now this is like the culmination of all of that. And like, yeah, your adrenaline's high. You're maybe a little stressed and like things happen so fast. Like you're, I, I can save this, I can save this. And then all of a sudden, yeah, you're falling. Now, now you have to flip that switch and be like, I can't save this. I'm gonna fall. Um, and like I said, yeah, your best bet's to relax. Almost be like drunk. Like if you ever seen that, um, I don't know. I've never seen the movie, but there's like a Jackie Tran dr- drunken master. Like he gets better at fighting when he's drunk. I don't know how the movie plays out. I'm not trying to say anything about the movie. I just know I've seen like a scene from it where yeah, he he drinks a bunch of liquor and is like fighting people or something. But like you, that that's kind of the idea. You want to be like the way you'd be trying to fight while drunk, just being like stupid. Not like not like angry, but just like loosey goosey, like just being stupid and not really doing anything effective. You're not fighting, like you're fighting the earth. You're gonna lose every time, you know. Like you, you, the, the you know trillion the one odds, not trillion the one odds, but like trillion the one mass ratio, you know. So you could repeat the trial for every atom in the universe and you fail every time. Like there's no odds that are going to make you win this, win this battle. So you just have to minimize the damage you're going to take, but you can't always do that. So especially if it's violent, but if it's not that violent, that's like where you have somewhat of a chance. Like if you're fall, like if you're tipping over, like at a low speed or you're crashing at a low speed, things are happening very fast, but like you have a chance to pull out so what I did wrong in my situation was I went the other way like so I went so far into not trying to stop myself like physically stop myself from falling like I did everything on the bike that I thought I could reasonably do to stop the crash and then but then I realized like as I was coming around and spinning to the right that like this was it I was like I'm going down like I'm, I'm leaning too far I have no traction if I keep trying to do, if I try to make another move, like it's not going to be, I just got to accept what's going on. And that's pretty much what I did. And I, 
I, I kind of just gripped the bars real loose, and when, I, and when I fell off, like, I was so, my arms were so loose, my whole body was so loose, that I let my arms, my left arm flail backwards because of the torque of hitting the ground, and that's what dislocated my shoulder. My left side, the, my left side never hit the ground in a way that would have dislocated my shoulder, because I hit on the right side, and then I kind of just rolled onto my back, and that was it. But by that point, it was it was dislocated. By the time I hit, by the time my back hit the ground, so what I should have done, and hopefully I do in the future, is if I if I'm if I'm falling and my hands aren't on the handlebars, I need to cross like if you, you know how they tell you to do on a water slide, right? Like cross your arms. That's what I needed to be doing. I needed to make like a fist and cro like with both my hands and cross my arms. If I had done that. I guarantee you, I would have, I would have, I, I probably wouldn't have just like hit the ground and stopped. I probably would have hit the ground and maybe rolled a little bit, like maybe like once, like one complete roll or even like half a roll, but like I would have rolled a little bit because my, my, my arms were in giving me more, you know, rotational speed. My rotational inertia is the same, but the speed, because the moment, anyways, so my, it, it doesn't matter. My, um, my speed's higher and I, I'm going to continue to rotate. But that's okay. Like you want the crash to take longer. If you keep moving, if you slide for a long time, that's good. If you slide into something and stop really fast, that's really bad. That's as bad as it can get. But anyway, yeah, I would have gotten up and I would have picked my bike up and the whole day probably would have been fine. I probably would have slowed down a lot at that point. Um, it would have been fine. I probably, maybe I would have crashed another day. Maybe I would have crashed that same day, but yeah, I, I would have been fine with that crash had I not just kind of let my arms do whatever, but instead pulled them in into my chest and like crossed them. But there's not a whole lot you can do. Like it, it all happens so fast and, um, we don't really practice crashing, right? You know what I mean? Like we don't practice crashing. So when it happens, it's just a whole new thing. This is a whole new experience and you're not just going to like rise to some, you know, whimsical idea you have of not sticking your arm out towards the ground or not trying to use your leg to keep yourself up, you know, that kind of thing. Um, you see people do it in cars. I've seen these videos. They're horrible to watch. Don't go looking them out. But when you're a depraved asshole like me, you go and look at these videos and you see people, you know, their cars tipping over, rotating. And they'll, and it's like kind of, it, it, you see when it's slow, like the car will slowly start rolling over and they'll put their arm out of the window. And you're like, oh my God, that is like the last thing you want to do, right? Because you can easily crush your hand or part of your arm underneath the car. Your better bet would, right, would be to look away from what's going to happen. Like say, say you're on the, say you're in the driver's uh, you're in the driver's seat and the car's rolling to the left, like, you know, towards you. You want to look right. And if anything, you may want to grab something more in the car to the right. Don't go looking out to where you're going to hit. Look the other way. That way, definitely grab and hold on real tight. So like when the car hits to the right, it might try to throw you out and then you're going to hit your head, right? You, you want to try to do everything you can to avoid hitting your head, like hit your back, hit your butt. Back injuries suck, but head injuries are worse because, yeah, I mean, I've had a couple now and that's probably too, too many. Like, I'm probably going to pay the price. I might already be paying the price, right? I mean, after that big crash I got in, I mean, I don't know. I was already, you know, struggling with some mental health stuff, but like that made it so much worse that I went on this like spiral of... And I'm still on it. Like, I'm trying to get off. Like, right? Like, I've been making progress. But, like, I got under this whole spiral of just eating and drinking and just being super gluttonous and just not trying to give a shit about anything. And uh, that hasn't been good. I don't think that's due to the head injury. But I think it just, you know, it, it's like the trigger, right? It, I had an excuse to not exercise and not eat right for a few weeks and I just ran with it and then a bunch of other things in my life changed at the same time and that really set everything off right so what are you gonna do <laughs> I'm not trying to complain I just you don't want to hit your head like it's gonna hurt so much worse than you think when you hit your head like 
it, it's a pain that does not go away for 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 quite some time. Um, and again, it can it can kill you, easily can kill you, and um, it can also cause injuries that are just like as bad or worse than death. Or it can or you know, even if you don't hit your head that hard, it can cause you problems like 40, you know, 20, 30, 40 years down the line. You can have brain problems, like just awful, awful stuff happen to you that might be the result of a brain injury, like it's uh, from hitting your head. So, uh, I know I'm getting really depressing, but depressed about that, but yeah, I mean, that's why I say it's best to try to land on your side. So that's the same thing with the car. Like again, you want to grab on to maybe like the seat or the headrest or just anything you can grab quickly, right? And if you fall, try to try to land on your side because there's there's less of a chance you're gonna hit your head if you land on your side. If you land flat, think about it, if you land flat on your back, your head's gonna go straight back as soon as you hit the ground and it's just gonna slam into the ground. If you land on your side, there's like there's like some distance your head needs to travel, right? So if you're falling and you land on your side, you like you can tend to your neck a little, and there's a decent chance if you didn't fall very far, like say it's just a rollover in a car, you didn't fall more than like a few inches, your head's probably not gonna hit the ground at all. And yeah, you're probably gonna be fine. But all, doing all that, again, it's like a whimsical fantasy. Like you don't practice, you're we're not practicing this stuff. Thinking about it or just hearing someone say it or doing anything is not going to make it happen. You have to practice being in car crashes to be good at car crashes, right? It's BS. It's, you have to get lucky. And it's the same thing with riding. And I think our instincts kind of guide us, right? Maybe we have been thinking about it. Maybe we have crashed a lot of bicycles or people just yelled at us over and over again, don't do this, don't do this. Um, I think that's the only thing you can do. Unfortunately, it's just hope that you, you you know it's beaten into your brain and you and you do react correctly when when the time comes. But yeah, there's nothing better than practice. That's why the MotoGP guys, yeah, they get injured a lot, but you, you see it like it's not as bad usually, right? Like that Marquez thing was a freak accident, right? Like had he um, had Marquez um, not been hit by his own bike, the way he fell was like textbook, like. He was in like when he started flying through the air. I swear, to, I swear to you, he probably he's, he's scared. Like we're all scared because you know it's gonna hurt. You know it can injure you. You know all these bad things. This will be the last thing I ever do. But but they're able to just relax and make it count. So and this is the road I've been down here before. This is the twisty road. They're able to relax, you know, and just kind of put their body into this almost like rag dollish. Like with a little tension, but just you know, very loose into their and, 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 and then land in a way where they're gonna roll and, and not really hang up on any one part of their body. Because yeah, you're still probably gonna get injured from time to time when you do it that way. But yeah, if you, if you hang up, if your body hangs up on something while you're falling from like a high speed, like 60, 100 miles an hour or whatever, yeah, you're screwed. You're gonna you're gonna be you know dealing with surgeries 100 percent. So. And that goes at any speed. If, you, if your body hangs up on something while you're falling, that is like, that is one of the worst case scenarios you can come across next to just slamming your head into like the concrete with no protection. Or even hell, even with protection. You don't want your head to hit anything. <laughs> Take it from a man who has hit his head on, on some things. Three times I've had, three or four times I've hit my head really hard, so. Two of it was enough to black out. So, I mean, that's more than anyone should experience. Like, ideally, right, you'd never hit your head hard enough to black out. That would be, that would be the ideal. So, anyone who's never been there, just keep it going. Like, I've never broken any bones yet. But, yeah, I've, the, the head injury stuff doesn't make it any, any easier. Um, so, that uh, sign was pretty interesting, right? That guy really checked up for that speed sign. Oh, I remember thinking this when I was riding. I was like, when you're riding down a road you've never been down before, and then coming the other way is a kind of moto goozy, you're probably doing the right thing. <laughs> I don't know. Moto goozies are kind of hipster bikes, or just weird kind of like, they're like the Saab or something of motorcycles, right? They have a weird design kind of weird design philosophy not necessarily bad not necessarily good but you just don't see a lot of them either they're kind of quirky and 
quirky people tend to own them, at least in my experience. So, yeah. Quirky even within the riding community, that's saying a lot. <sighs> yeah, that guy checked up though for that flashing speed sign. I thought that was kind of funny. Like, the sign can't hurt you, but we have this like... It, it, I've, I've talked to someone about it. I know I have it on video, but we have this like... Like, um... What am I trying to say? Like a psychological reaction to the sign. Where seeing our speed displayed back as being shown, oh my god, I'm going like, you know, 14 over or something. Like I'm going 54 and a 40. It's almost like maybe I should slow down. It, it makes you think it for a second. And that is enough, I think, because we're so used to really living and dying by our ass, like our inner ear in the car or, or, or on the bike. We immediately see that flashing and we just slow down, right? It's like a Pavlovian response um, where I feel a little unsure of what I'm doing. So my, my first reaction is to like lift off the throttle or even just get on the brakes a little bit, right? Um, and I think that's what ends up happening, right? You see the sign flashing and you just, ro you just roll off the throttle or lift your foot up or you just slow down a little, you know? And uh, at that point, you're almost like, nah, you don't want to speed back up because you're like, nah, I meant to do that. That was on purpose. I saw something up ahead, right? Just, I'm just making sure that, you know, no one's going to turn on me or something. <laughs> I mean, there's a deer. And so you just think that for a split second and you just keep going slow for a minute and then you speed back up. Try to play it cool. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to put words. I'm just trying to put thoughts into the, this guy who's been going pretty decently fast. Like, I've never been on this road before. I don't think I would be going any faster than him. In fact, I might even be going slower if I wasn't behind him. Um, yeah, I have a problem with riding where I don't like to not... I don't like to let cars ahead of me on roads like this ride, drive away. And that's a bad, bad, bad... Um, attitude to have but it is what it is that's who i am um i'm not gonna change right <laughs> wow it's already 3 3 my god this road keeps going for a while it's pretty nice yeah i might have to work this into a ride um somehow because maybe i come at this like the other way like, this is the way I, this is like kind of the back way to 50 idea. The back way to that kind of 50 15 interchange. Because I can get down here pretty quick without having to use 15. And this is a more fun, I mean, it's not exactly a twisty road, but it's got a few twists and turns. And it's, it's better than uh, whatever this is Evergreen Mills and taking Evergreen Mills to 15. This is the part that sucks. What do we got? Okay, well, we're getting close to the end. I, I, I guess I thought this part was going to be like 10 minutes long, but it's only a few. That's good. So, yeah, we got some construction, but... Um, yeah, what's going to go on here is we are behind this, this truck who is very slow. Like, oh my god. If you don't want to watch to the end and you're like thinking about changing that dial, this might be the time to do it, guys. I'm not, I'm not a radio station. Turn that dial, guys. Press back on your remote or go look for another video. <laughs> no, I don't know. We're, we're just cruising behind this guy. Evergreen Mills is a pretty nice road. 55 mile an hour speed limit, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> this, is, this is actually a high alert road for me because you have this high speed limit um, and the road does not have a ton of cross traffic, but the cross tra but it does have cross traffic and it's just, it's narrow. Like, look at this. If you go off the road at 55, I mean, you're almost immediately you're into a ditch and yeah, you're not gonna, you're gonna crash. I don't care if you're in a car or a bike. If you go into that ditch, you put any wheels into that ditch on the side of the road, you are going to crash. If you do it at 55 miles an hour or more. You cannot save it. You, you're, you're done. Your best bet is to hopefully just hope and pray that you keep the crash like not so bad. Um, but also, I mean, if you overcorrect on a road right like this, like say somebody is um, stops ahead of you and you go into the other lane, 
and you go around the person stopped and you miss all the cars or whatever, but you're gonna end up swerving back to the right probably going like head on into a tree, even though you missed all the cars. Or of course someone being drunk and crossing the double yellow. That happens. But that's more rare, honestly, than people just being distracted and just being stupid. That's that's the, mo the more likely scenario. Maybe a little drunk. I mean, that doesn't hurt. But I'm talking like, you know, blind drunk, just, just barely able to get down the road somehow. Like, you know, real alcoholic shit. Or just whatever. It doesn't matter. You see teens and stuff getting drunk. Of course. I mean, I did. Um, and, yeah, trying try to drive drunk and stuff. That's awful. Like, worst case scenario. No experience in the car, no experience drinking. Oof. It's not going to be a good scenario. Um, it's really sad. So many tragedies. It, it, it's just... It, it, and that's what alcohol does to you, right? I mean, it makes you feel like... Oh, I think maybe I shouldn't do this. Turns into, let's do it, you know? That's just, ugh, it just happens. Especially if someone's like, man, I really need to get home, you know? Like, you just are stupid. Yeah, you just make these bad decisions over and over again. It's like this never-ending cycle of, of shit. Anyway, yeah, that's a really, this has been a depressing video. I don't know, I don't know why I'm on this depressing video. I'm trying to be upbeat for the other ones. Maybe I'm just wearing myself out. Oh my God. He's right, this is my first, second, third, fourth. This is like my fourth video in like three or four days that I've done audio for now. Maybe I'm just getting a little audioed out, right? I don't know, I'm, I'm really pumping the content out. I'm like, guys, guys, I'm not dead forever. My channel's only dead for a few months. It's okay, <laughs> I don't know. You know what I mean, so whatever. <laughs> We're just gonna continue on. So yeah, I mean, no, this is Ryan Road. I know that. Um, this is this is another really boulevardy road. Um, I don't particularly enjoy this road, but it is. Um, it's it doesn't seem too unsafe if you're you know not riding like a jackass, because <clears throat> you do have good visibility uh, along the whole thing. Because it's basically one straight line. And also the traffic. I've never seen traffic here like too too bad. Because it's really just like there's a commercial center that we'll see in a minute, but it's mostly just residential. Um, and it's, you know, medium, medium, you know, low to medium density residential. Like out here, obviously, it's, it's like, I think it's a country club or something even. So that, you know, really cuts down the traffic from over here. But over here, yeah, like medium density kind of, you know, townhouses. That, those are actually really close together single family houses. I'd say that's medium density too. I mean, obviously a lot less people than townhomes, but those neighborhoods also tend to be bigger in size as well. So, so there's a lot more of them, the single family homes. Um, although again, yeah, you look over there, that's a lot of townhouses, right? And even, I don't know, again, townhouses, condos, apartments, whatever. It's a, just, a, it's a lot of residential units. Um, crammed up in there. Again, I'm looking at that more than the riding because what is there to look at? I've been, look, I've been going straight and f whatever behind this Jeep. Maybe following him too close? I don't know. I felt like I could see pretty good. You, you really want to make sure you can see because you want to know, like, you want to be far enough away from the guy in front of you ideally so that you can react to what he's reacting to like at the same time. That's like, you know, the ideal case, but obviously like, it's a little unrealistic um, to always be in that situation. But see, right here, this is pretty good. Like the, the distance um, I'm following here, like I, I can see pretty well. Um, like obviously I can't see right in front of his bumper, that's impossible, but I can, you know, within 10, 20 feet of, his, of the front of his car, I can start seeing almost the whole road. So, I mean, and that makes it so that if something happens right in front of him, I can start braking when he starts braking, right? Because that's my best chance of not, not only, braking early is your best chance not only to avoid rear-ending people, it's your best chance to avoid getting rear-ended yourself. The earlier, like, if, there, if the, the highway ahead of you is slowing down, right, and you want to just, you, you don't want to rush up to it 
and get and use that as an opportunity to catch up with traffic and get right on their ass, you know, real quick. Um, that's really dangerous because the person behind you, if they're thinking the same thing, that you both are going to get on the brakes super late and they might end up just rear-ending the crap out of you, which, I mean, okay, it's their fault, but getting rear-ended sucks no matter who's, whose fault it is, okay? So you can do yourself a lot of good by just lightly getting on the brakes at first and gradually coming, or maybe even just flashing your brakes. Get off the gas a little, flash your brakes a couple times, and then maybe even give it a little maintenance throttle after that and then slowly coast down to the stop. You know, let the people ahead of you know, like when, when unexpected things happen, get on the brakes as early as you can. Even if you don't have to get on them in the emergency brake, get on the brakes early because that at least will hopefully, it at least it at least gives the person behind you a chance to, I don't know what I was waving at there, was that a bike? It, it gives them a chance to, you know, maybe realize, oh no, you know, traffic isn't just, we're not just, you know, flowing along and everything's hunky-dory. Like, the guy ahead of me is braking and flashing his brakes for some reason. That's not normal. I should pay attention. And obviously that's not going to, you know, I mean, that's not going to guarantee anything, but... Things like that can definitely, in my opinion, give you a better chance. And it's also forcing that person to check up on you at a more gradual rate. Rather than just slamming on your brakes and reducing your speed really quick, um, when you get on the brakes gradually and reduce your speed gradually, the person behind you is actually going to catch you more quickly. And they're going to catch you while you're going faster. But the closing speed between you is never going to be as high as if you just slam on your brakes. Because that, that closing speed is going to be very high. You're going to slam on your brakes before them, right? They're going to be not braking at all when you're braking really hard. And they're gonna, their closing speed is going to pick up very quickly on yours. And that's what you're trying to avoid. Like, in, it's like if they do rear-end you, you want them to be going as slow as possible, right? It's better to get rear-ended at, you know, three miles an hour. Which is basically, I would say, almost nothing's going to happen if they hit you at three miles an hour. It might do some damage to your bike. It might hurt a little, but it's not going to, like... It, 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 you might fall, but, you, you know, hopefully if you fall okay, you're not going to get injured. Um, if they hit you at 20, if they hit you at 30, you're, you're not going to, you know, you're, you're going to go to the hospital. You're going to go to the hospital um, at that point. So... Yeah, I mean, you just yeah, I mean, if you're if you're especially so if you're in any kind of situation like this, this, I like to keep a big gap. Like this gap I'm keeping here is, is in my opinion, really good. Again, because I have good visibility um, as to what's going on. I can I can actually see a lot better than what the camera shows. The camera's a decent bit below my eye level, right? And I know it's only a few inches, but if you think about the trigonometry of it. From this distance, a few inches actually makes a big difference. And having my eyes, you know, again, it doesn't matter. <coughs> but I can see a lot more um, than what's going on, than what you can see with the camera in front of me. So, if, if something happens, I have so much time to react that it not only helps me, like, especially if someone's tailgating me. There was a great MC Rider video on that. And I, I didn't really realize it until he was talking about it. And, and, one of the things he says is like one of the best things you can do for tailgaters is just just give more following distance to the car in front of you. Don't like make it, you know, a mile, but don't if you're getting tailgated, the last thing you want to do is tailgate the guy in front of you because now you're creating this like car train situation. And this is how like huge pileups happen, like when the weather's not even that bad. I'm not talking about, you know, pile-ups when there's a bunch of snow or ice or, or sudden rain or fog. I'm just talking like a deer or something, or a blown tire pile-up, you know, where it's like five or six cars, because they were all right there. No one had time to react. The front car suddenly had to stop, or one of the cars in the train suddenly had to stop, so everyone behind crashed because they were all right and punched up at, you know, 75, 80 plus miles an hour. It's, it's ridiculous. If you're, like, this following, this distance I'm at here, I'm going maybe 55, 60. I would not be following as close if I were going 80 miles an hour. Um, maybe for a second or two, but I'm going to do what I can do at, at very high, at, you know, at highway speeds to be really far away from everybody. And if I have to, I will drive slower. You know, I'll get passed by a bunch of people, everyone else on the road to avoid having to, you know, tailgate. So it is, it is what it is, huh? 
So here's an interesting one, not really for me. Which lane do you choose? Do you choose the right turn lane on the uh, on the right, which allows you to turn right on red? So I was behind that truck, that white truck, right? So, um, oh, what, it skipped. <laughs> that stinks. I, uh, I'm just gonna keep it. A token to my crappy editing. I don't know what happened, but, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so, so I took the, I took the more outside lane, which means you can't turn right on red, but it's such a long, like, you know, line to turn right on red. When I see that, I usually go for the, the more left lane, even if there's a few cars in it, because at that point, I can just chill and look behind me, right? I don't have to look forward and backwards. The only thing I have to worry about as a rider is, is someone coming up behind me and it's going to rear end me. I'm not going, I'm not going until the light turns green. I can just chill. I was worried about that little move, the way I was editing all these clips. I was worried that I was going to do that move. Yeah. There's no foolproof way, in my opinion, to get it right, besides watching through all your footage. And I kind of did that, but I gave up most of the way through, because I was like, ah, it's fine, it looks good now, and I should have gone the whole way. What are you going to do? <laughs> and this is always the funny one. Um, like, I'm just trying to look at me going back and forth like that. I'm setting myself up here so that I can get a good drive onto on the 28 here from Waxpool. So I was talking about the Waxpool traffic before. It's actually not as bad going this way, going north. It, it, it's worse going the other way. Look at this lady, like, what a bitch. Sorry. Like, you, you, you should not have driven, you, that, that, I mean, ugh. I'm, t I'm driving too close now because I'm upset and see, by my emotions. So, but now you can see I'm actually like, it was a couple seconds and now I'm like backing off. I'm just taking it easy. And I don't even look, right? I don't even look at her. I do rip the bike open pretty fast. I don't know why I was going there. It must have been 85. It could have been much more than 85, but still, rip it right by him. Not that safe because she could swerve over at me and when you're accelerating that hard. Look at all that traffic though. That's that's the traffic we saw before when I was getting off 28. That's funny. So I think this is gonna be the end. Pretty sure I programmed it to end um, right around here because this is right in my neighborhood. This is, you know, uh, this used to be um, logical or orbital. This used to be orbital ATK. Now it's north of Grumman, um, right by my neighborhood. So, all right guys, thanks for listening. Stay safe and think about your riding, like always. Take care.